that guy! Stop. It's often said that for evil to triumph, all that is required is for good men to do nothing. You could have taken that guy apart. I missed the part where that's my problem. It eloquently sums up that inaction, whether driven by ambivalence or fear of the repercussions of those actions, by its tacit acceptance of a stagnant status quo, can play as big a role as those who drove the bus into the ditch in the first place. The action does not have to be some mighty deed. For the incremental acts of thousands can change the attitudes of great civilizations. I mean, just look at our changing attitudes towards slavery, towards women, towards homosexuals over the last 150 years. This year, 2011, a woman was sentenced to death merely for saying what she thought about Islam. Merely for her words, for nothing more than what she said, their society, based on Islamic law, decided to kill her by hanging. This year, the woman who initially popularized the idea of Draw Muhammad Day as a, as, as a humorous way of introducing the religion to the concept of free speech was forced into hiding, with the FBI describing the threat on her life as very serious. That happened in America. Now, there will be those who look on these threats of violence to inhibit free speech and their de facto export to the free world with ambivalence and indifference. And there will be those out there who will choose inaction for fear of its repercussions. And there will be those who look to the lessons of history and to how social attitudes can be changed by the tiny incremental act of thousands and with the realization that inaction will merely condemn another generation to live in this self-same stagnant status quo. And that's why this year, on the 20th of May, Draw Muhammad Day will return. And it will continue to return until this religion changes. Until Islam grows up. Well, okay, let's be serious, at least until it's grown a sense of humour. Face it, boys, yours is just one religion of thousands on this planet. And yours is the only religion of peace that will have riots of thousands that will burn down embassies over, over cartoons. Yours is the only religion that will have leaders of the most populous Islamic country on the planet say that merely burning the Quran would constitute a threat to global peace. Yours is the only religion that will have its governments block entire aspects of the web because they fear the irrational response of the Islamic practitioners if God forbid, they should come face to face with free speech on the internet. And then the totem that defines this religion as lagging at least a century or so behind modern civilization. Yours is the only religion that in this day and age will still sentence people to death merely for saying what they think about Islam. Yours is the religion that's different. Yours is the religion that has to change. Oh, and it's going to change one cartoon at a time, from the pens and the desktops of the supporters of free speech. From those who find it abhorrent that you can still be executed in this day and age for saying what you think about Islam. From those who find the export of religious censorship through intimidation unacceptable, incrementally and irresistibly, one cartoon at a time, it's going to change. And as the sun sets on May the 20th, 2011, the second annual Draw Muhammad Day, and one humorless religion comes one cartoon closer to entering the civilized world, another religion will be raising the bar for making itself the focus of humor. Yeah, would you believe it that thousands of Christians think the world is going to end on Saturday, the 21st of May, 2011? Thousands. Harold Camping is 89 years old. Five nights a week, he hosts a live broadcast on family radio. It's heard all over the country and is rebroadcast on television. His words are translated into 56 languages worldwide. Camping bases his end times prediction on 70 years of biblical study. He's developed a mathematical system to interpret prophecies hidden in the Bible. A few years ago, the UC Berkeley trained engineer crunched the numbers and calculated the world would end May 21st, 2011. He says those who believe in Jesus Christ will be raptured then. Those left behind will face complete devastation. There's going to be a great earthquake such as never been. It'll be so great that all the tombs everywhere in the world are going to be thrown open. That's going to require a granddaddy earthquake.
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Draw Muhammad Day 2 is going to cause earthquakes in the Christian end of the world. However, meanwhile, in reality, the sane people are going to first celebrate their successful defense of free speech against one bunch of religious crazies on Draw Muhammad Day, and then they're going to have a global, global, not the end of the world party, where people will be able to upload their images from all over the world of the rapture not happening. But it's at times like this that the need for the rationalist community is thrown into such brutally harsh relief. Just imagine for a second what the world would look like if either of these religious organisations were allowed to continue uncontested and unchecked. Can you imagine what a world would look like where either of these sets of jokers held the reins of power? So you say it's not okay to be gay Well I think you're just evil You're just some racist who can't tie my laces Your point of view is medieval 